Okay, here we are, Matthew Russell Lee, Inner City Press, here, across the street from the Southern District of New York Courthouse, where, well, we're going to get into some sentencing. Tomorrow will be the sentencing of Sam Bankman-Fried, and we're, we're, we cover the trial closely. We've been putting up some letters that Team Bankman-Fried put in at the last second. Um, you be the judge. You can find them out. And the government will be asking for 40 to 50 years. Bankman-Fried was initially asking for 63 months. Now it seems like he's asking for less um, in the most recent filing. So it should be an interesting one. It will begin at 9.30 tomorrow see it on Inner City Press. But today, lesser known, but also of interest, uh, Amy Harris. Amy, A-I-M-E-E. -E. Amy Harris, who pled guilty to the, to the sale of Ashley Biden's diary, found in a seemingly drug rehab apartment in Florida. Um, she was to be sentenced a couple times and hasn't come. Today, 2.30 is the deadline. But yesterday, her lawyer, her appointed Criminal Justice Act lawyer, said that he hasn't been in touch with her. He doesn't know if she's coming or not. Um, the judge said, put into the docket, you better come. Whether Amy Harris is watching the docket or not, I don't know. It'll be today. She'll either come through the exit, uh, the entrance across the street from me, or she won't. Uh, and then we'll see whether the judge sends the marshals down there to Florida. So we'll have to check it out. Other sentencing news. Wait a second. Mark Scott, the money launderer for OneCoin, now he's applied for bail pending appeal, which would basically keep him out. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's an amazing story. It's an amazing story of impunity. You need to check it out. In other crypto news, we're covering the civil trial of SEC versus Terraform Labs. Yesterday, we went with the full blow-by-blow. A couple of witnesses, a guy called Revsin, uh, who had been at various hedge funds and, and was, he, uh, essentially he was claiming he was defrauded by Doquan, who's now in Montenegro, by the way. And, and somebody's asked me when is, where in the U.S. his uh, criminal trial will be. It's right here. It's in front of Judge Cronin, except that I don't know if he's going to be extradited here. We'll have to see. There was another ex uh, um, witness called Cole, and at the day's end, Judge Rakoff was pretty pretty down on both sides, but mostly on the defense, saying that the cross-examinations were irrelevant. So we'll see how it goes today. We're going in there, there uh, to cover it. Uh, we have some other white-collar things. We'll hold off on that for a moment, except to say the United Nations. Uh, Blue-collar? No, it's not. They're, they're, they're blue washers. Yesterday, they made an announcement about their great work on their rapes by their peacekeepers. Um, and it's crazy, and then nobody that they let into the briefing even asked any questions. But we ask repeatedly about cases of sexual abuse by UN peacekeepers. Very simple questions. What have you done for the victim? And with, without exception, Stefan Dujarek, Ferhan Haq, Melissa Fleming, no answers at all, because they can get away with it. The UN takes public money, sends peacekeepers to countries where, in many cases, they commit uh, sexual abuse against children, and then they just fly them home. There's no recourse and no accountability to the countries they're supposed to help. But we will continue to push to get back in there and ask the questions. But for now, we're going into the courthouse. To be continued.